am holding a situation in my heart. I'm holding a person. Usually it's a person, not a situation. It's a person because God's about people. He's not about things. And, and when, he, when I say about people, he's about the one. It's, it's always about the one. He's not about you as a group. He's about you. And so he holds you in his heart. So sometimes what happens is, is we feel like we are overwhelmed. And the reason that we're overwhelmed is because we're trying to handle things from the outside. But if we would go in and allow the heart of God within our heart to hold that situation, our capacity will increase significantly of what we can handle. Does that make sense? So sometimes we feel like overwhelmed by things because what we're trying to do is we're trying to handle them in our own outside. But if we would go in to where the Holy of Holies is, like we were talking about this morning, the Sancta Sanctorum, we go into the Holy of Holies, we fellowship with the Father. Now, from the joy that comes forth from the heart of the Father, the laughter, because it's laughter. I mean, they're laughing. (laughs) They're laughing. And they're not laughing at us. They're laughing with us because they're so pleased. God is so pleased with us. I'm not crying, I'm laughing, exactly. And that that joy that comes out of the Father. So now from that joy, now we can hold many things in our heart. Now the news isn't bothering us as much because now the joy of the Lord is coming forth from within us because we've shifted our focus. We've shifted our focus from earth into heaven. And in heaven, there is no sadness. In heaven, there is no, I don't know how we're going to do it. In heaven, there is no, in heaven, there's joy because of one thing. Jesus has done it all. Jesus has done everything. There's nothing left other than to live out of the joy. Okay? So sometimes when we feel overwhelmed, what we need to do is go in. Go into your own heart, which is the Sancta Sanctorum, the Holy of Holies. Faith in the presence of God within faith in the presence of God within. Once we have faith in the fact that he isn't coming down, we got to work up God, work it up God, work it God. Oh, we did. That was the song right there. That was the one. The presence came at that song. Where was the presence before then? Where did he go? Did he go on vacation? I thought that Jesus said that when the spirit comes, he comes within. Maybe on the third song, we remembered (laughs) that's probably what happened. You were like, oh, God within. Ah, but see, you could have started there. And now you're going from wave of glory to wave of glory. And so God's bringing us to this place where we become hyper aware of his presence within. And then out of that, we minister the joy that comes from heaven to the earth, to all of creation, as well as to people, right? But it doesn't come from our ability to handle all of these situations. It comes from the Father's heart who's actually holding the whole thing and the love of the father is being ministered into every single thing that we're seeing but we're doing it completely in him in other words our ability is his ability okay and so now we no longer are anxious because he's not anxious now now we're no longer trying to figure things out because everything's complete in him you see so it's god's heart holding us and in, we, in turn, in our hearts, holding others within his heart. So it's one heart in him, okay? So just remember that. Now, I'm going to do my message super late. That was my 15 minutes. I didn't start. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53, the spiritual body. For this one, prepare... Okay, this is Aramaic, so just... Be prepared. (laughs) 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. For this one prepared, okay, for this one prepared, of what? Being clothed of decay will have no decay. And this one's that clothed of death has no death. When this one that has been clothed of decay would have no decay, and this one that died has no death, then the word it was recorded will happen. Death is swallowed up by victory. So we have been talking about over the past two weeks, well, not two weeks, but two times that we've been teaching this lesson, um, the spiritual body, okay? So what is it we talked about was the fact that the spiritual body has been given life through Christ. We are in a soul body. It's what it says in Aramaic. The soul body decays. The spiritual body does not decay. It just doesn't decay. It, uh, one year, two years, a hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, it never decayed. It just stays exactly the same, okay? <laughs> so it's a different kind of body, right? 
It's a spiritual body. And we talked about how our bodies, the soul body, groans for the spiritual body because it knows there's a spiritual body. But the soul body is the seed, okay? So when it goes, it now we have a spiritual body and it shifts dimensionally, okay? So this spiritual body is, is dimensionally different than the soul body. And Jesus gave life to the spiritual body, okay? So seed goes in the ground, but does the tree come up the next day? No. So that's why it's a seed, right? So the seed goes in, and then the spiritual body comes. But we know that a day comes where the spiritual bodies instantly all appear at once, okay? So that day is coming, and it talks about that in the Scripture, which we're not talking about. But just in case you were wondering, when the spiritual body comes, it comes instantly, okay? So we talked about this in the past. So it says that when this happens, which it has happened, it already happened. Jesus did it. Death, the scripture that talks about death being swallowed up by victory is fulfilled. Okay, that's in verse 54. So death itself has been swallowed up whole. It no longer has an impact because all of mankind has been brought into Christ and we are now clothed with immortality. The spiritual body does not decay. Another way of saying that is the spiritual body is immortal. Jesus is in the spiritual body. There are others in spiritual bodies, okay? Jesus was the first. There are others, okay? Now, Jesus has already brought us into immortality. The human body has been clothed with life. There is coming a day, an instantaneous day, where all the bodies become spiritual bodies, just like that, okay? So, now, here's what I was going to talk about today. Why did God decide to raise up bodies. Why can't we just be content being spirits? Because you know you're a spirit. People have left their bodies and come back into their bodies. Happens all the time. So why can't we just be spirits? Why can't God just say, well, you know, this body is decaying. It's no good. We'll just forget it. You can be a spirit now. Why? Well, I'm going to go through it. I want us first to turn to Matthew 27, verse 50. And this is one I've mentioned many times, but I haven't ever read it. And I figured, you know, I'll give you some evidence here. Because there's a lot of things about bodies in the scripture. And we've been reading about bodies. We've been, we've been reading about the different kinds of bodies, the different classes of bodies, where the scripture talks about there's bird bodies. Do you know that there's, you know, you, you've got bird bodies, but you've got these angels that have wings and eyes, you know, all over them? I mean, that's a kind of body, right? That's a spiritual body. But then you have birds. That's a, that's a lower body. You know, we have all these birds outside. You got, you got um, fish, you know? That's, that's a body. It's a specific type of body God made for something to be inside of. Okay? <laughs> so, Matthew 27, Matthew 27, 50. Jesus himself, this is Jesus on the cross. This is the very end. Jesus passionately cried with an upraised voice and his spirit went left. That means he died. At once, the door facing the temple was cracked open to two from above unto below. The land was shaken and the stones were cracked open. This is the earth going, yes! <laughs> it was like, yes, he did it. He did it. He finished it. It was the earth excited because the earth knows what happened? The burial house was opened and many bodies of the holy ones that were laid rose. After his raising up, they dispersed and entered to the holy city and they were appearing to many. So who are these people? The holy ones. These are the saints from the Old Testament it didn't say that an astral body came up out of the ground and scarily appeared to different people in their houses. It says bodies. Bodies are very important, guys. The body is important. The physical world is important. It is very important. Okay? So this happened... And then it says, after his raising, they dispersed. So they went around. Where'd they go? I have no idea. Maybe they went up in their bodies to heaven. Maybe they stayed here. 
Maybe they're able to go back and forth dimensionally and we just have not seen any of them yet. Some people have met people before that have been, that they've, they've met them and they were a few hundred years old. There's reports of this around the world. They've met them. Now, again, a person who's a few hundred years old, do you think he's just going to appear to anybody who has no idea what it, what it is that's happening here? But as God begins to show us things, they, they know that we know. Okay? These are, these are called, uh, some of them called them the ever-living ones. Okay? So some people are still alive. Okay? They didn't die. Some of them died. They came back to life and didn't die ever again. Okay? So that's already happened. It's already happened. Now, there's a day coming where all the bodies become spiritual bodies. But there's also been cases of this happening up until this day. There's another day coming. It's called the day of the Lord. Okay? There's another, there's another day. So this is the scripture. So I know you guys are probably asking, when, when, when was it where the, the, the dead saints came up? Well, that's the scripture right there. Right. So why did God bother raising them up? Didn't, we already heard, you know, that they were in Abraham's bosom. Some of them were there, you know, that's where they were hanging out. Why don't he just take the spirits up into heaven? But he actually rose the bodies up before the resurrection that we know is going to happen, okay? Bodies are houses, They're, they're dwelling places. I'm, I'm giving you an overview of what, a, of what a body is. A body is a place that, that you live in. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying before, you use these eyes to see in this dimension. You use these ears to hear in this dimension. You use this mouth to speak in this dimension. This is not the only dimension that there is. But in order to be in this dimension... And to interact and have authority in this dimension, you have to have a house. Mm -hmm. It's important to have a house. So there are places you live. If you don't have a place, you're, you're homeless. You don't have a home, okay? You can visit a place. You can vacation to a place. You can stay with someone else at a place. But without a place... You don't actually live there. Okay? So you follow me on this? So on the earth, we have bodies because this is our habitation, our home, here. So us, spiritual beings with many dimensions, okay, live inside of our house when we're interacting in this dimension, in this realm, the physical realm. So we are, science already has studied, guys, that there's other realms. I mean, we know this. Mm -hmm. we, we now know that there's a quantum realm, there's a realm of quantum physics where things work differently. They can actually study some of it and see it. They don't know how it works, but they know it's there. So there are other dimensions and things that we live in. We know that there's a spiritual dimension. Obviously, there's a spiritual dimension because that's this is the house that our spirits live in. So bodies give you authority. So if I want to move this phone from here to here, okay, I do that with the body because it has authority in the physical realm. Mm -hmm. Now, I could move the phone with my spirit, but that's a different You could move things in the spirit. That's a different thing. But the body gives you authority to operate in the physical realm. Okay, so... Now, my spirit can do things in the spirit, which affect this realm, but generally, I use this body, <laughs> okay? Generally, I do. Again, if I close my eyes and I pray, and I begin to do something, I begin to change something in the spiritual realm that has an effect on the natural realm. That, isn't that what prayer is? Right. Okay. So you already do this. <laughs> Everyone does, mm -hmm. okay? This is a spiritual body. We have a spiritual body reserved for us. We are in a soul body right now, okay? Bodies are important because they give us authority in the realms that God has brought us into. It has to do with the heart of the Father for the creation. Adam, he gave a body, a soul body, for him to be on the earth so that he can rule, he can have authority, he could take a plant and plant it in the ground with his soul body, Okay, well, he did that after the fall. Before the fall, he would just pick fruit. But, you know, he would have that authority so that he could use his soul body. So bodies are important. The physical realm is important. Even though the physical realm has been dramatically reduced, 
from what it used to be. It's dramatic. I mean, when we see how different later when we start to see it, we're going to be like, are you kidding me? We actually lived like that. That is amazing that we're even able to do what we did. It's literally the grace of God we're even able to do what we're doing right now. That's how impacted the physical realm was. Um, but it changed in Christ. Everything changed. And we're beginning to see the first fruits appearing everywhere, including the salvation of our own spirits and souls affecting our body. That's why healing comes so easily now. You know, healing comes, it just comes, it's already there. You know, all of these things come because of what the first fruits of what has been brought to us through Christ. So what about spirits without bodies? Because there's those, <laughs> right? You ever watch Ghost Hunters? <laughs> they have those things, you know? They're, they're real, you can't see them. So there are some disembodied spirits on the earth, and they don't actually belong here, okay? They don't have a home. They have fallen from where they used to be. So they used to have a home, but they were not nice. And because of that, they don't have a house now. And so they roam around. And um, they cause trouble, usually. Basically, the difference is, is the degree of trouble they cause. <laughs> Some cause a little trouble, some cause medium trouble, and some cause a lot of trouble. It basically, they're just trouble. <laughs> but they, they like to have a house, and they will try to use other people's houses um, to exert their authority on the earth illegally. That happens. And I'm not just talking about possession. I'm talking about thoughts, ideas, concepts. They, they usually um, exert frequency, uh, sound. Frequency in the spirit, they give off things. They tell people like, you can't see angels. You can't, God does kind of likes you, but not really. They say things like that and people pick up on them in the spirit. So these are the disembodied spirits. They don't know the Lord the right way. They have, they messed up. They fell. They're illegal, okay? Their rule is over, okay? And everything they once have is gone forever. So it's really just, they're stuck in time right now. So it's just kind of working its way to where they are. But their, their judgment is already done. It's already complete. There's no, there's nothing else that needs to be said about them. All right, so that's that's those. Then we have the cloud of witnesses. Okay, so we know that we're encompassed about with a cloud of witnesses. Talks about in Hebrews 11 and 12. You know, all this great cloud of witnesses that are kind of spurring us on. And so, dimensionally speaking, um, they're right nearby. Okay, and they're a part of what we're doing. But where are they? They're in heaven. Okay, so the cloud of witnesses is in, is in heaven, not on the earth. Now. I don't know to the degree which the cloud of witnesses will be interacting with the earth in the future. So I'm not just saying like that is not, al that's always going to be the case. But I know right now that usually when we see the cloud of witnesses, we actually see them in heaven when we're in heaven. You see them, there they are, boop. Because it's a dimension. It's the, it's the heavenly realm. It's turning in and seeing what it is that God has done within heaven. And you can see the cloud and you can see how we're interacting with the angels in the cloud of witnesses. So uh, the cloud of witnesses, the, the, which is now the cloud of witnesses, to clarify, is saints that have gone on before us. Who's saints? They're Christians, Christian people. It could be your, your great grandma, your grandma. It could be, you know, people that you knew that were younger. Maybe they went early. They're in the cloud. They're, they're urging you on. They're, the, the purposes of God have not changed for them. It's still the same as when they were in their body. Is it, you know what I'm saying? It's like people feel like when, when somebody leaves their body and goes into heaven that their purpose changed. Purpose is the same, but how they interact with earth is different because there's no body. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have a body, okay? But they have an interaction with us. It's called the church in, above and, and beneath. So there's two. There's a church abo above and there's a church beneath. There's an ecclesia above and an ecclesia beneath. And we work together on things. We work together. Even though we may not recognize we're working together, we are working together. I am teaching from the scripture, from the gospel that Jesus gave to the apostle Paul. Do you understand? That's an interaction with the cloud of witnesses, just that alone. And Paul isn't dead because you don't die. So he understands that the gospel that he was given is being taught all over the world. And I'm sure, I haven't seen him, but I'm sure he is looking into it all over the world that the gospel is being preached. He was very concerned with it when he was in his body. I'm sure he is just as concerned now that he's in the cloud of witnesses. That's just one example of many. 
You may have had great, great, great grandparents that prayed for you and didn't even know your name. They're looking into you. You see what I'm saying? They're looking in. They're pressing in. They're looking not to see whether you got a new car, not to see whether you, you, you got a new job or a new raise. They're looking to see the plan of God, the love of the Father being demonstrated on the earth through the areas that God had revealed, has revealed to them. And we're ever increasing in this knowledge. We're ever increasing in this understanding of where we've been brought in Christ. And that's what the cloud of witnesses is looking into. And so we're interacting with them. There could be messages that have been given to us through the cloud of witnesses that we didn't even realize. You're sitting there and you get revelation, bam. Well, why wouldn't the Father God use someone from the cloud of witnesses to deliver that message into your spirit? Why wouldn't he? Of course he would, right? We're all ministers, we're all ministers, okay? So it's very simple. Angels. So the cloud of witnesses doesn't have a body right now, but they will have a body when we get bodies. But they have a spiritual body and they interact with us, okay? With the creation. Angels appear in bodily forms for specific purposes. I'm only giving my limited amount of information of what I know. <laughs> There's people that may know a lot more than me about this. We can see angels in their spirit body too when we are in the spirit. You can actually see a lot of stuff when you're in the spirit. You can definitely see angels when you're in the spirit. You can see angels when angels want you to see them. <laughs> Which I think angels want us to see them a lot more than we think about them. And again, the more that you desire to see angels, the more angels you're going to see. <laughs> People are like, you shouldn't desire to see angels. And tell me where that scripture is, because there isn't such a thing. You can desire to see angels. Of course you can. They're your brothers. They're they're not our, our, our blood brothers, but they're brothers of us in the, in, the, in the ministry of the Father. Of course. So, But it's desire. If you don't want it, that's fine. You don't have to have it. It's called a law of desire. <laughs> but you're going to get real flaky. Yeah. Well, how flaky are you now? Completely ignoring them. That's pretty flaky if you ask me. They're doing stuff all day long for you and you totally ignore them. And you talk to your dog, but you won't talk to an angel because that means you're praying to your angel. Are you praying to your dog when you talk to your dog? I mean, these are crazy concepts yeah. that people, but we, God is opening this up for us. He's just showing us how silly we are. That's all. Okay. So angels are supposed to be here. So even though we may see them in a spirit body, they're supposed to be here. They're not illegally here. They are here definitely legally. We have angels that are assigned to us. Okay. Angels are assigned to us. And, and just so you know, you have angels that are assigned to you at birth, but you also have other angels that are assigned to you at different times in your life. <laughs> Four different things, not just to protect you, not just to protect you in a traffic accident, because that's usually what everybody thinks about when they think about angels. But <laughs> angels are not just traffic accident angels. They do all sorts of stuff, you guys. I mean, I mean, you could have an angel, you could have had a problem at work that you're trying to fix, and an angel came and gave you a message, and you didn't realize it because you couldn't see. Angels are used all the time. They're not just traffic accident things. And I know most of the time people think about angels because when they're in a traffic accident, they're like, oh my goodness, that was an angel, right? But it could have also been an angel when you had an idea at work. It could have also been an angel when you needed um, money and somebody gave you some money. It could have been an angel going, hey, why don't you give them some money? They do stuff like that all the time. So angels are very, and, and they love us very much, and, and the Father loves them very much, and we love them very much when we think about them. And we should think about them, and we should interact with them. We're all together in the Father's love. It's all the same. I don't go like, I can't think about my kids because that's not God. Well, of course you can think about your kids. Think about your angels. Think about everybody that's part of the creation. Open yourself up to the entire buffet. <laughs> I only eat steak, just steak. Be like, yeah, but there's chicken and there's rice. There's all sorts of things. God has done so many things for us to enjoy. And angels enjoy being with us, okay? So angels are not human. They're angels, right? But they're part of our heavenly home. They're part of us. They're part of what God has done in us. And people don't turn into angels. And people don't turn into angels, yeah. But they're like angels they're in the sense that they don't get married in heaven. So you don't get married in heaven. That part is different, you know. But that's okay too. That was an earth thing, but it's okay. We still love each other. And even in heaven, we may have be in the same houses. I don't know. We'll, it'll be fun, you know. <laughs> so that, you're not like an angel in that way, you know. But but you are like an angel in in the way that Jesus said, okay? So you don't turn into an angel when you die. You are who you are, okay? And again, the whole point is the body is important. The body is important. 
spiritual bo- spiritual spirits, okay, without bodies are not the way God wanted it to be, okay? So they're inside of time, they're spirits without bodies. They need bodies. You need a body. You're supposed to have a body because you need to have a body so that you can um, administrate uh, in a way the, th- the love of the Father to the area that you're inside of, okay? So you're inside of the creation. So we're in physical realm right now. He needs you to be inside your body so that you can share the love of the Father to the earth through the body. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why bodies are important, and that's why God raises the dead. And when he when you say he raises the dead, it doesn't mean he... Because we have a highly spiritualized culture right now. Like, you're going to see... You go on, on TV or the movies, you're going to see spirits and all sorts of stuff moving all over the place. But but remember, the bodies what Jesus saved. You are a spirit, but you live inside of this body right now. Okay? But there are other bodies. There's a, there's a spiritual body. Okay? And you're, you're going to be in that spiritual body at one point in the future. Okay? That's what you're soul body is groaning for. It's like spiritual body, spiritual body. Okay. You know, there's guys now that I know they don't, they, they, they eat communion. They don't have to eat when they take in the life of Jesus in communion. So they don't get hungry anymore and they actually are getting stronger. They're athletic. They're doing, they're doing athletic things or winning awards or winning medals in the Olympics and things like that. They're actually just taking communion as their supplement. They take no other supplement. Sometimes they don't eat. They take the communion. They take the communion is it. That is their activation point for receiving the life of Jesus is the communion, just like Jesus said, because it's the life of God. So these are like things that happen all the time, but we just didn't realize that they were happening or that they could happen. But when Jesus said, this is my flesh, this is my blood, this is, you have your life in me. That's physical, guys. Physical is important. So, I won't go any further. There's a whole other thing I'm going to talk about, about the earth and how um, important the earth is to God, because it includes all of creation. And I'll talk about it later. But I want to emphasize, why is it that we believe that the physical world is not important to God? Why is it that we had that thought? We don't. We teach it, don't teach that. But why is it before we used to think that? Why is it before we used to think God saved us into a spiritual place because this natural place is really just not worth anything. Why did we think that before? I'll tell you why we thought it. Number one, I'll tell you this. That's not mentioned in the scripture, not even one time. And I will go into it next time because there's a certain scripture, a couple scriptures that people use to, as evidence that God doesn't like the earth and he's going to get rid of it, okay? But I, I'm going to go into that and I'm going to show you the reason why that is absolutely not correct and that scripture is totally taken out of context when it's interpreted that way, okay? Number two, the main reason why we believe this is because of a false heresy, a demonic heresy that the early church combated continually. And it is, it is so prevalent in the modern church that we actually think it's the Bible. And it's the, it's the heresy, I talk about it all the time, I'm just going to explain it again. It's the heresy of dualism, that there is the natural physical world and there is the spiritual world. They are different than each other. The physical world is evil and the invisible spiritual world is good. In other words, everything that's physical is bad. Everything. Eventually, it's just bad. Like, in other words, it's got decay, it's bad. And the spiritual, so if you really want to get spiritual, you will only deal with the invisible world, the spiritual world. That's the doctrine of dualism. It's a, it's a false heresy. It's actually the heresy of dualism. And that is one of the reasons why It is so acceptable to say that this old world is no good because we believe what the Greeks, so this is a Greek heresy, okay? The Greeks believed, this is like, um, I think Plato and um, Socrates, I think it's Socrates specifically, is the one who who invented this doctrine, Um, that invisible things are good, invisible things are bad. And that's not the way it is at all because God's love is exemplified all throughout nature. Now, we do see effects of decay, okay? That's not the Lord. That's the decay. <laughs> but in him, all of the creation is in him, you see? So there is no dualistic idea of it. So the reason that we're teaching it like this, and, and one of the biggest reasons why this doctrine is so wicked is because it comes against the resurrection. 
It, I mean, it really does. If you look at its core, it'd be like, well, why would God raise up a body? It's all junk, right? Why would we need a spiritual body? It's all junk, you know? And really, a spiritual body is, Jesus said, put your hands in my hands to Thomas, right? And put your hand in my side. He could touch him. That's a body. He's not a ghost. They thought they saw a ghost. You see, that's that, that doctrine so prevalent, even the disciples were that way. I mean, they were just like, oh my goodness, it's a ghost. They couldn't even comprehend the fact that the resurrection is a physical resurrection, a physical body, because the creation is not wicked. The creation is good. The creation is under the influence of something that is wicked, but it is not wicked. It is not evil. You see? See how important that is? Because when you understand that the creation is not evil, you understand why bodies are so important to God. I mean, it's important what you do in your body, but, <laughs> right? If you did something good in your body, that's good. You do something bad in your body, that's bad. So you know that much, right? Well, that would tell you right away that the body's important. Because if not, it'd be like, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just the spiritual, just the things you can't say. Yeah, but the physical, you see? It's, it's together, <laughs> There's no, there's no difference. There's no separation between the physical, you know? Like, that's why I'm saying, like, Jesus can go right through the wall. I mean, that's spiritual, dimensional. He's just shifting right through the wall. The wall is like, oh, you can go through me. That's no problem. No problem, Jesus. Go right through. Other people come up to the wall. No, you cannot go through the wall. I am a wall. You are not allowed to go through me. Jesus, you can go right through. Right through the wall he goes. Right? So, you see, so, so again, what this is exciting to me, this is what I think about, is what is about to happen is going to be pretty amazing stuff. Because once you realize that the physical world and the spiritual world, they're never separated. They're just different aspects of God's love. Different facets of God's grace to all of his creation because he loves the whole thing. Okay? We'll talk about it later. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, helping us in our thinking to understand some stuff about your love for us, to help, helping us to understand how important our body is, how important the creation is, that you have redeemed, you have made new everything. And so, Lord, we just center in on you right now. We center in on the love of the Father and the joy that you have set for us. And we just go right into your love as in a pool of, of your goodness, Lord. We just sink right in. Hallelujah. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Very late.